When an econo-financial world based on never-ending credit meets the reality of suspicion about inability to repay debt, all bets are off. Last week saw the end of the beginning of a crisis of liquidity in credit-driven capitalism in the United States. This week, more information is available to confirm our fears. As we head towards the tidying of balance sheets at the year end, more tartan paint salesmen are about to become IPOs on already squeamish markets. The signs are not good. Later on Wednesday morning, when in an unexpected move, the Federal Reserve expanded the size of its $2 funding operations, the overnight and term repo, from $75 billion to $100 billion, and from $30 billion to $60 billion heading into quarter end, effectively injecting up to $250 billion in funding, $30 billion in already concluded term repo as well as two $60 billion term repos yet to come together with the $100 billion overnight repo, assuming full allotment on all operations, for a grand total of $250 billion. This is getting worse. Remember, this started with $53 billion last week. We're now up to $139 billion, and we haven't heard the overnight number yet, 30 plus 60 plus 49. Sure, it could have been worse today, but the trend is still going up, not down. The spike in the repo rate might have a technical explanation, a misjudgment was made in the Fed's money market operations. Even so, two conclusions can be drawn. Managing the money markets is becoming harder and from now on, banks will be studying each other's creditworthiness to a greater degree than before. Those people, who struggle with the minutiae of money markets and that includes most professionals, should focus on the causes and not the symptoms. Financial markets have recovered from each downturn since 1980, because interest rates have been cut to new lows. Post-2008, they were cut to near zero or below zero in all major economies. In response to a new financial crisis, they cannot go any lower. Central banks will look for new ways to replicate or broaden quantitative easing. At some point, governments will simply see repression as an easier option. Then there is the problem of risk-free assets becoming risky assets. Financial markets assume that the probability of major governments such as the US or UK defaulting is zero. These governments are entering the next downturn with debt roughly twice the levels proportionate to GDP that were seen in 2008. This liquidity problem is a signal that trading desks are loaded up on inventory and can't get rid of it. Repo is done out of a need for cash. If you own all of your securities, i.e. a long only, no leverage mutual fund, you have no need to repo your securities. You're earning interest every night so why would you want to repo your securities where you are paying interest for that overnight loan? Securities lending is another animal. So, it is those that lever up and need the cash for settlement purposes on securities they've bought with borrowed money that needs to utilize the repo desk. With this in mind, as we continue to see this need to obtain cash, again, needed to settle other securities purchases, it shows these firms don't have the capital to add more inventory to, what appears to be, a bloated inventory. Now comes the fun part. The Treasury is about to auction 3s, 10s, and 30-year bonds. If I am correct, again, I could be wrong. The Fed realizes securities firms don't have the shelf space to take down a good portion of these auctions. If there isn't enough retail, institutional demand, it will lead to not only a crappy auction but major concerns to the street that there is now no backstop, at all, to any sell-off. At which point everyone will want to be the first one through the door and sell immediately. But to whom? If there isn't enough liquidity in the repo market to finance their positions, the firms would be unable to increase their inventory. We all saw repo shut down during the 2008 crisis. Wall Street runs on money, overnight money. They lever up in order to inventory securities for trading. If they can't get overnight money, they can't purchase securities. And if they can't unload what they have, it means the buy side isn't taking on more either. It seems too convenient that the Fed has specifically mentioned stepping in for a long enough time frame to see how the auction shakes out. It begs the question. Are these supposed overnight loans, repos, really being paid back in 24 hours and collateral return? Or is demand decreasing because these are actually stealth POMOs where the Fed has actually kept the collateral and issued money on a long-term basis? Certainly could explain the decline in loan applications. Maybe if the Fed's balance sheet reporting is honest, we may soon discover it has somehow increased net month. Or maybe this all disappears like the other 21 trillion. It's Friday.
No liquidity shortage on Fridays, only booze shortage needs to be fixed. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. I keep thinking this bubble will pop, but I've been saying a crash was right around the corner for years and years. In an economy that isn't manipulated to the hilt, this thing would have blown up a long time ago. We all know it needs to crash, but I'm starting to think the Fed won't ever let it. Just keep printing and keep pumping until they can blame somebody else. Creating a bunch of money out of thin air isn't a recovery by any stretch of the imagination. If it were, we would never have to recover from anything. I can't believe the Ponzi scheme has continued this long. Ponzi scheme is continuing because it's eating the poor and middle class. Druck is wrong. Ending the bubble will end the shipping of jobs overseas and help the poor. America's rich sold America's middle class jobs to China in return for cheap credit to leverage up and buy back stocks to be richer. The party ends when debt doesn't increase versus incomes. That occurs from 1. Deleveraging and liquidation or 2. Financial repression. Both help the poor relative to the rich because it represents a reversal of the trend for increasing wealth inequality. Record highs every day unless you own gold and silver and have cash in savings accounts. They are destroying America. I'd say that's exactly what's going on right now. The progressive slide into universal poverty as the government sucks out all available productivity to be repurposed in infinitely expanding waste, fraud, and abuse. I think you gentlemen are suffering from an unconscious form of morality, not wanting to invest in the stripping of all wealth from the common man. The plan is spend, spend, spend until what's left of the GDP is little but government spending, and the economy outside of government largesse is terminally crippled. Then they have the total dependency and control they crave to implement all extreme socialist programs. Watch the debt market for signals. Don't look for valuations, P, E, earnings. Those don't matter anymore. You park cash of currency that is being intentionally debased into assets that have book or goodwill values in order to preserve the capital. Stacking does not work. But when debt markets implode, you gotta run for the exits fast as you can for your dear life. The market will crash when they're ready. When no more consumers exist, they will collapse the markets and bail out all large businesses. Of course, small businesses will be allowed to go bust. Honestly, if the market does crash, I think we'll get a bailout, rescue package from Congress specifically designed to lift it right back up to these levels and higher. If you sell now, you risk big inflation losses. There is no place else to hide from this inflation. Housing is already unaffordable, tips are a joke, and gold may never be allowed back over $2,000 per Oz in my lifetime. Even after nearly two years our supply chains cannot recover from COVID. Scarcity causes price increases, Economics 101. Are you going to sit in cash in a 0.1% savings account or 1% T-bills with 9% to 10% annual inflation? I don't even want to think of the losses as they compound. Inflation is the ultimate regressive tax, looting of the working class. At current interest rates, the banks do not want to loan. They are loaning to the government but not otherwise. It's coming soon. The tsunami has just drawn back the beach. Best to run away from the water than to go looking for shells. We got a month to go. The Fed won't have a say when they lose control of yields. The Fed could have 25 trillion of dollar denominated assets on its balance sheet. The question is, does its dollar still function? Right now, the dollar wants everyone to understand that while every other major currency has surpassed its highest price for physical gold the dollar has not. So all things are relative. But behind the curtain, systemic banks are preparing for a shock to the system based on the increasing move away from dollar settlement. If producer nation banks no longer need dollars for settlement, there's no liquidity problem, rather there's a derivatives problem. That problem, I believe, has begun. It's pretty obvious that the inevitable crisis of interbank confidence is well underway. As stated several times in this channel, the 29 trillion in Fed dark money bailouts from the last such event barely kept the system hobbling along in maintenance mode for 11 years, although it cannot be said that the illusion of recovery wasn't artfully maintained. Now with its daily repo on autopilot, publicly, the Fed can only do what it's systematically programmed to do, keep bailing out defaulting derivative debt with more debt-based derivative fiat. 
As the weeks and months progress, you will be entertained with cries of, all is well, and, back to normal. But what is going on behind the curtain of happy smoke blowing up the skirts of the little people will be harder and harder to contain. I suspect it's Deutsche Bank that can't cover its losses, and its counterparties know it. It's Lehman, AIG in the form of Deutsche, Lincoln National, for starters, but all the primary dealers are feeling their sphincters tighten as the great sucking sound coming from their assholes presages the collapsing supernova of liquidity antimatter. In other words, multiple, dark holes, with, big JP, conspicuously involved, deep state cufflinks and all. Maybe Mnuchin will go full Paulson on CNN. Williams as Geithner is unlikely, and Powell is no Bernanke. Somehow looking like a deer in the headlights and talking about, too big to fail. It's got to be spun another way. We waded into uncharted waters in 2008 and we've been drifting further out without a life preserver ever since. Even the families are divided. I know what I'd like to see, but no light is shed upon the flower of understanding. Only darkness. Someone will say, I told you so, but that won't matter. It will be interesting. Let the liquid invasion ensue. This system is held together by thoughts blowing in the wind. And my fellow man seems to see a storm rising. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.